Hi, I'm Doug Powell. This is my kitchen, and today we have a renowned microbiologist, Randy Phoebus, here. And there's been an outbreak, and there's been several outbreaks over the past years of salmonella in dog food. And just like we don't want salmonella in human food, it's important to keep your pets safe and healthy. So, Dr. Phoebus, what's going on with this one? Well, just uh, recently we, we uh, had the announcement of a recall by Mars Pet Care uh, regarding salmonella that's contaminating, potentially contaminating dry uh, pet food manufactured out of an Everson, Pennsylvania facility, which is one of numerous facilities that they own. So it's a very small percentage of the product manufactured, but it's still important that we understand and, and check to be sure that uh, if you've got that particular uh, lot code, that uh, you handle it properly and, and follow the recall instructions. So the first thing to look for, now this is not dog food that's implicated in the recall, but you need to find this code and what you want to look at is the first two digits and if it says a 17, get rid of it. Take it back to the store. They will provide okay. a refund. Uh, the other thing is if, uh, if your pet uh, is indicating any uh, potential illness, uh, lethargic or diarrhea or uh, yeah. lost appetite, then you may need to uh, look proactively at whether or not your animal is uh, harboring a salmonella infection. Now, uh, why do we worry about salmonella in dog food, or how does it get there? Salmonella uh, can, is a very ubiquitous organism. It's in the environment, uh, and virtually all animals can carry uh, this organism in the GI tract, in the gastrointestinal tract, and uh, they can do this without having any kind of illness. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's some studies that have shown that uh, 30 or more percent of uh, dogs and uh, 18 to 20 percent of cats uh, actually carry this organism without any um, signs of illness. They can spread this to the environment, to water bowls, to your hands, in and the kitchen. And people, Sadie's sitting here licking me. Now, Absolutely. I don't generally encourage it, but you know, some people let the dogs yeah. jump up, lick their face, sleep with them. You know, you have to make your own personal choice, but just let it be known that salmonella can get introduced, whether it's from pet food, whether it's from the environment. You know, and even making pet foods real tough. They can come out of the plant absolutely clean, and like most dog owners, I don't wash the dog dish every day, so maybe this has been sitting here for a while, flies coming in and out, who knows what's on here. Just from the dogs licking it, they transfer stuff that grows, and then I go and stick it in this big bag, and I've now provided in this nice uh, 85 degree Kansas heat, a lovely incubating growth environment for salmonella. Randy, how should we store our pet food? Well, pet food, uh, like any human food, should be stored where it's protected from the environment, from handling, and from insects or whatever. Uh, in a case of, of Doug's uh, ba open bag of pet food here, the optimal way would to have uh, be put that bag inside some sort of plastic trash can container that would uh, have a top that we could seal it. Something like this. Yeah, or there's some uh, product. This is uh, cat food, which is just as important to, and can carry salmonella that uh, you can buy it already in a, a manufactured uh, container that will help seal it. And I do have a plastic container, but we wanted to show how potentially bad I could be. It's important to know that, uh, and in the case of the, of the current recall, the salmonella is actually in the product as it leaves the manufacturing facility. And uh, under law, uh, product is not supposed to be sold that is contaminated with salmonella. Uh, but uh, just from the manufacturing process, it can happen, and that's what we're dealing with here. Uh, and the manufacturers are doing a lot, uh, the best they can, to try to control salmonella in manufactured product, but you have to assume that, uh, that potentially it can have salmonella in it. We, we've talked a lot about uh, dog food, but there's a lot of uh, pet treats uh, that are on the market, uh, chew bones, uh, jerky strips, and things like that, pig ears. And even more than the dry dog food, these have been uh, very highly implicated in salmonella transmission. A uh, very high percentage of those products, particularly the pig ear type products, uh, have salmonella on, on them and you can get them on your hands. Uh, more importantly, your child or, or kids can uh, handle those things and they contaminate themselves and that is a real big problem. Yeah, like we're in my kitchen, I'm sitting here, I'm not going to touch it now, but this is some bread rising. 
it's real important whether you're pregnant or just anyone these things have salmonella on them in some cases so when you touch them you need to go wash your hands especially in a kitchen environment mm -hmm. Um, you know, we, we think a lot about uh, dogs and cats, but uh, keep in mind that all animals uh, can carry this, and, and, and particularly farm animals and wild animals and birds and uh, not and just turtles. And there's an, turtles. There's an reptiles. outbreak in the UK right yeah. now of salmonella from people who had deprived childhoods like me and only had cold blooded pets and were forced to kiss their turtles for affection. So, to, to just give consumers advice, wash your hands after handling any of this product. Store the product correctly. Uh, keep water bowls and, and, and feed bowls clean and dry uh, as far as the feed goes. And uh, follow good practices that you would use for human food in your kitchen.